Hey, you having car trouble? Welcome back to the Calibre Tools channel. Is it your battery or your alternator? Let's talk about it. See you right after this. Yes, it is possible to drive with a bad battery or a bad alternator, but as many of you know, you're not going to get that far. If you got a bad battery and you shut the car off, next time you jump into the car, guess what? It won't start. But if you have a good battery and a bad alternator, that alternator is going to drain that battery, causing your car to stall at the most unpredictable times, aka in rush hour traffic on the freeway. I'm going to show you guys what to look for in this video, but don't hesitate to go to the nearest shop if you're nervous about doing this or you got no experience. All right, so your car's not starting. Is it a bad battery or is it a bad alternator? Well, with a bad battery, you can tell certain signs, right? Like your dashboard lights may start getting dim or the lights, you know, the interior lights may start dimming out on you. If you got electric windows, they may start going up or down real slow. Your radio may not turn on. Even worse than that, let's just say it's raining, your windshield wipers may not even work. But the most telltale sign of a bad battery is when your car doesn't start or it starts real sluggishly. Or sometimes it may start, sometimes it won't, stuff like that. And you definitely know it's bad when you turn that ignition and there's no sound at all. It's just silence. Now the battery is responsible for giving that car that initial electrical boost to actually start the car. But the alternator is responsible for keeping that battery charged and all the electrical systems working in your car after the car starts. But how do you know if your alternator's going bad? Well, there's a few reasons. Some of them overlap with the battery issues. Like, you know, if you have trouble starting the car, the interior or exterior lights can start to dim on you just like with a bad battery. But some of the issues that are unique to a bad alternator is when your car keeps stalling on you or you hear a squealing sound coming from the engine every time you turn on the heat. That can indicate that the bearings in the alternator are going bad. Or let's just say you got a jump when the car starts and then it shuts right off after that. Another reason your alternator can be going bad is that the stator winding is burnt out, right? If you guys can see those wires right there, those copper looking wires, that's the stator winding. If you guys know anything about motors and electricity, it's just a bunch of wires wound up in a certain way to produce an electrical charge. The alternator stator wiring can get burnt out. How? Well, let's just say you wash the engine, right? The water can destroy the insulation on the wiring, what they call the insulation varnish. Or if you drive through a really deep puddle, like we sometimes do in a storm, that alternator can get soaked with water. It can be submerged in water at some point, right? And that could cause the wiring to get burnt out as well. It can even cause a short circuit, which in turn will short circuit the electrical system in the car. Because as we know, water is one of the best conductors of electricity. But aside from water or any liquid getting on your alternator and damaging the windings or anything like that, it's gonna naturally deteriorate. It's a physical part and things are gonna go wrong with it. There are also other parts in the alternator that can be damaged or get worn out as well, like the alternator brushes, when they get in contact with what they call the slip rings. If that happens long enough, it's only a matter of time before they get worn out. Other components like diodes or relays can also fail because of short circuits or just natural deterioration. And of course, some of these issues can be caused by a faulty battery as well. Before you do any tests on your alternator, you should check your belts first. These right here, particularly your serpentine belt, right? Press on it a little bit, see if it's firm, right? Because if it's loose, that can cause the alternator not to charge properly. So you want to check your belts first, right? Make sure that they're nice and firm. And if they're loose, make sure you tighten them before you test your alternator. Okay, so we're gonna test the alternator to see if it's okay, but we're gonna need a voltmeter or a multimeter. We're gonna make sure the car engine is off for this first test. First thing we wanna do is set it to 20 volts DC, okay? The voltage on your battery is not gonna exceed 20 volts, right? So that's why we set it at 20 volts. We set it on the volts DC portion of the dial because it's only direct current coming out of that battery, DC current. So we got everything set there. Then we're gonna take the red lead and put it on the positive terminal of the battery, and we're gonna take the black lead and put it on the negative terminal of the battery. So we got about 12.7 volts coming out of it, which is fine. It should fall between the 12.5, 12.8 range, assuming the battery is fully charged. Next, we're gonna start the engine and see what reading we get. It should be between 13.5 and 14.5 or 14.6 volts. Anything below or above that means you probably have to change your alternator. The alternator's not working properly or something's going on.
Okay, so we got about 13.9 volts, which means the alternator is doing its job. Everything's looking good in that department. Okay, so now we're gonna put a load on the alternator. We're gonna test it out, do a little stress test on it. We're gonna turn the lights on, we're gonna turn the heat on, we're gonna turn the radio on, whatever you can. And if the voltage drops below that threshold, 13.5, you know the alternator is not good. The voltage should stay the same when you do this. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I turned the lights on, I turned the heat on, AC on, all of that. Let's check the voltage out. All right, so the voltage is still between 13.5 and 14.5, so it's doing pretty good. So the alternator on this car is pretty good. Nothing wrong with it, doing its job. Now you may have heard that you can disconnect your negative cable when you're testing to see if your alternator is working properly, but that's not suggested in this day and age. Maybe before the age of computerized cars and cars with chips like we have today, that was okay, but not so much now. Reason being is that if you disconnect the cable on some of these modern cars, what happens is that the computers will tell the alternator to ramp up the voltage and with no battery as a buffer, as an in-between in the circuit, the extra voltage that's sent into the system can fry all your electrical components. So if you have a newer car, I wouldn't suggest taking that off or trying that test. It's really not worth it. Just go ahead and perform the test like I showed you earlier in the video. You don't have to disconnect any of the terminals, any of the cables here, and you should be okay. Now, one of the easiest tests to perform is with your ears. That means listening to your engine, right? For any irregularities in sound, that's gonna indicate something's going on, something needs to be looked into. A trick that I read about, I never used it, but it sounds like a pretty good method of testing for strange noises in your engine, is to take a three foot long piece of a rubber hose. So if you got an old hose laying around, cut a three foot long piece out of it, take that piece, take it over to your car engine while the car's running, and put one end to your ear and the other end, place it on the alternator. And if there's a strange rattling noise coming from the alternator, it could indicate that you have some bad bearings in your alternator. It's worth a try, right? Go grab a multimeter. You can get them online for four bucks to 20 bucks. You don't have to get a really expensive one with all the bells and whistles. Just get a basic one that'll give you the readings and you can keep it in your glove compartment or your roadside ready kit. Check the links in the description. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, you learned something from it, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share because all of that helps to push this content out into the universe. See you guys in the next one.